this is the time of the day. I'm fully aware that everybody is full, stuffed, happy, and sleepy. And so uh, our time will be brief. If you have your Bibles, um, this afternoon we're going to turn to uh, the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. If you're a pastor and you go to a potluck, you have to take something from every dish. Or somebody will be like, hey, he didn't take something from my dish. I'm never coming back to the church. So you take something from every dish. My thing is today, every single thing that I ate was really good. And then you can't say, who made the ham? The ham was excellent. Because then somebody else will say, hey, he didn't, he didn't say anything about my casserole. I'm never coming back to that church. But I would say, this butter here, that was to go, I don't know if it was gravy or butter. That's got the anointing of God all over it. That's, that's good stuff. So thank you for everybody who had a hand in our meal. It was a delicious meal and our desserts. And also for the ladies that decorated and um, that um, made all the little party favors. Are these party favors something that we take? Is this, do we know this? Um, do we take those? Yes. Okay, so if you want to put them in your pocket, you're, you can sleep well tonight in your conscience. But uh, a lot of work went into these little knickknacks and stuffing and hiding Easter eggs and making the, the casseroles and swinging by the store, whatever you did. Uh, we praise God for uh, Easter. A lot went into Easter. Amen. Amen. It took a long time, all these prophecies down through the centuries that God... <laughs> He fulfilled them with one hand behind his back, uh, made it look easy, and then Jesus died on the cross and rose again. Um, and that's why we celebrate. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that um, we have a, a, a good church to celebrate together with. And uh, why don't we read uh, Matthew chapter 28, beginning verse number 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. By the way, we'll pause right there. The keepers did shake and became as dead men. These are very capable uh, centurions, warriors, soldiers. And they became like little ragdolls on the ground. They, they sh shook and became as dead men. Back to our text. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for Easter, we thank you for Resurrection Day, all that it means, not just to us as families that have uh, years of tradition of going to church growing up and we remember what our parents and our grandparents, and Lord, some of us have come uh, from backgrounds where we didn't grow up going to church, just recently you have found us and saved us, and Lord, we thank you that there's brand new traditions that sprout out of nowhere because of uh, the love of Calvary. Uh, that, that brings new life to this entire world. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. I pray that you bless our brief moments this, this afternoon. We thank you for the food that we have uh, already uh, partaken of. We thank you for the fellowship, all of your people that have gathered uh, in your house today. We thank you so much for the love of Christ that unites all of us uh, and makes us into one body. We thank you for the Spirit of God that lives inside of us that know Jesus. And we ask that you would give us the filling of that spirit, of your sweet spirit this afternoon. Help me as I speak that you'd give me the anointing of God for this hour. We thank you so much that we have something worth talking about on Easter morning. And we thank you so much for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It was the dawn of a new day. There was previous to this day nothing. There was nothing except God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that Jesus, the agent of God, the Creator, stepped out onto nothing and created everything. With the word of His power, He spoke everything into existence. And He said, let there be light. And there was light. There was a dawn of that first day because the Son was created instantaneously. 
by the power of, of God, by the power of Jesus. And he created the earth, he created the seas, he created the trees, and the grass, and the birds, and the pinnacle of all creation, he created man, and then out of Adam's rib, he created woman, and he looked at creation and said, it was very good. In the evening and the morning, or the sixth day, and then on the seventh day, God rested from all of his work, which he did, and he blessed the seventh, the seventh day, the Sabbath day, and hallowed it, and Adam and Eve were living brand new here on the earth, walking around, doing things that man, you just imagine what to do. And God created all that out of nothing. You know the story well, how the serpent came and beguiled Eve, and Eve passed the fruit to Adam, and they both ate, and their eyes were open, they knew that they were naked, they became sinners in a moment, and they died uh, the same death that God said that they would die, the separation between them and God. And now there was another day. Uh, the age of innocence was now gone, and now sin had cursed the earth. God did not uh, call a, a huddle and try to figure out what to do at that point. He had already figured out before he created anything. He already knew what he would do, and, and Jesus was the one who volunteered. And the Bible says that he was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Before God ever created the world, Jesus had already volunteered to be the lamb who would come and die for us. And so now humanity was plunged into sin. And for years and years and centuries that passed, man wondered, how are we going to take care of our sin? And God had the solution. He had a, a, a lamb to be slain or a bullock, depending on how rich you were, a turtle dove or whatever. And their blood had to be shed. And their blood had to flow because without the shedding of blood, the Bible says there's no remission of sins. And so every year, year, after year, after year, every year on the Day of Atonement, every day that the Passover would come, and all the feasts, they would repeat them year after year after year for one reason. Because God allowed for those things to temporarily cover their sin. Um, let's pretend that right now I made a huge mess up here. And let's pretend that I threw up all over the place. And this mess, it just stinks, it's nasty. And somebody says, what are we going to do about this? And everybody's got their own, you know, opinions and ideas. But, but then somebody comes up with a great idea. Let's bring a rug up here and we'll cover it over with the rug. Doesn't do much for the smell, but at least we're not looking directly at it anymore. You know, that type of thing. And that's what the sacrificial system was. It was a covering for their sin. It was a rug that God would have to put it down every year. But God still knew that that sin was there. God could still smell the sin of mankind. God has x-ray vision. He can still see the sin. But temporarily, it would cover the sin so that man and God could have a relationship. And this over and over and over again. It was kept on being repeated until the Bible says in the fullness of time, God, Jesus, came down, was born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. And Jesus came, and the Bible says, he volunteered to be the lamb that would be slain one time for the, for the sins of the world, to be sacrificed so that there's never another lamb that needs to be slain, that there's never another altar that needs to be erected. Uh, it, I don't know if you've ever pictured the scene in Jerusalem, but they actually had to break the Passover into two days because of all the people who came to Jerusalem there was not enough time to slaughter this many lambs uh, hundreds of thousands maybe even a million bulls and lambs impossible uh, how fast you have to be slicing and chopping and killing and so they had to break it into two days on the first night the Bible says that Jesus ate the Passover lamb and then it says on the second night he became the Passover lamb but he was the lamb that only had to be slain one time and I like the way somebody wrote it. Here's what they said. It's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Jesus is praying in the garden. Peter is sleeping. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. Pilate is struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday is coming. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary is crying. Peter is denying the Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scarlet. They crown him with thorns. See Jesus walking to Calvary now. His blood is dripping. His body is stumbling. His spirit's burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday is coming. The world is winning. 
and people are sinning, and evil is grinning. Soldiers nail my Savior's hands to the cross, his feet, and then they raise him up next to criminals. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved, for they don't even know that it's only Friday. Sunday is coming. See him there hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. And can nobody save him? Oh, it is Friday, but Sunday is coming. The earth trembles. The sky grows dark. My king yields his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has conquered and Satan's just laughing. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard and a rock is rolled into place. But you see, it's Friday. It's only Friday. And then we walk into our text there in Matthew 28 where it says that as the, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary and Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And they realized that this was the dawn of a brand new day. Everything before this day was totally different. The way things were thought of before this day, totally different. The way time is measured before this day, totally different. This is the dawn of a brand new day. Nobody's money is any good anymore from this day forward. Nobody's sacrificing lambs anymore. Nobody's sacrificing bullocks. We don't come yearly and yearly and yearly and, and, and in the same attitude of having to have our sins covered and covered and covered again. Now God reached down with an almighty rag and he sucked it in Jesus' blood and he wiped our sin clean. It's not there covered by anything. It's removed totally. Amen. Because when Jesus raised again from the dead, he died for our sins and he raised again for our life. And the Bible says because he lives, we will also live. Because he was raised, we will one day be raised. And I don't know if the undertaker is going to come and get me or if the upper taker is going to come and get me. But it doesn't matter. We're all going to be standing in heaven one day because of the resurrection. Amen. Because of the dawn of that brand new day. And all, I believe most of us have given testimony to knowing Jesus as our Savior. There's come that time in our life where we knew that we were sinners. That's, that's a universal fact. We knew that we couldn't do anything to save ourselves, that we deserve to go to hell, but that God came and he died for everyone, not for some people, not for good people, not for just the bad people, but for all of the people who were all bad people. And anyone who puts their faith in Jesus has their sins immediately forgiven, immediately washed away, immediately a home in heaven for all of eternity. And now there's a dawn of a brand new day for that person. It's, just, it's so encouraging to hear lately the people that God is saving. Uh, people like Trusty and his dad. And people like Jessica and Ryan that got saved and their little daughter. That one by one by one, the dawn of a brand new day begins to spring out. Uh, for people who have walked in darkness, but the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, the Bible says. Amen. Because that sun that comes up that will never set, once you live in Christ, you will never die. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this, that we have such hope because of a sun that comes that can never be darkened. No cloud will ever darken the, the sun of our new day, the new life that we have. And that's the hope that we have in the resurrection. I hope that you got up this morning with a little extra spring in your step because of that. The dawn of a brand new day. Uh, Miss Christy and I, we stayed up a little bit late last night. It was like one o'clock we stayed up till. Just a little preparation things, you know how it goes. And prep. It's just amazing how you need enough sleep, but it doesn't matter how little sleep you get or how much sleep you get. Something about Easter that's different. Uh, we got in our car, we started driving to church, and you see these people walking down the street and got their shorts on. Like, hey, what are you doing? I'm going to church, it's Easter. That doesn't matter what the people around us do. It doesn't matter how many people you know that do or don't go to church. It's you and your life and your walk with God. You know that God has dawned in your life. You know that God reached into that tomb like Lazarus and told you to come forth and gave you that new life. I hope that Easter causes your life uh, to burn like a light because of that dawn that comes up that we're going to all have problems some of you are going to go home to a problem this afternoon something's going to be spilled or something's going to be broken uh, there's going to be some serious problems in families there's going to be some serious problems in marriages or with children or with finances there's always problems 
But remember that Easter was the day that Jesus stepped on the head of the snake. Easter was the day that he won the victory for all of eternity. And one day we'll be free of these sin-cursed bodies. One, one day I'll be free of this sin-cursed mind. One day we'll be free of this earth that holds us down with its law of gravity. And those of us who have the Spirit of God inside of us, like a slingshot, one end is connected to me, the other end is connected to heaven. God will yank us up like he's pulling us a fish out of water. And that is absolutely assured. Nothing goes wrong in your job can change that. Nothing that goes wrong in your family can change that. No matter what Bank of America says is in the account, it can't change that joy and that peace and that level of excitement. We ought to be the living, walking billboards of Jesus Christ. Now, on our job this week, um, this, the kids are out of school this week, and that, they've got a reason to rejoice this week. Uh, and an extra reason is the, the resurrection. But on your job, you as a Christian ought to have a little bit brighter smile than everybody else. You ought to have a little bit more spring in your step than everybody else. Uh, you have to have a little bit more integrity in your life dealing with the business practices of our day to rise above that storm because of one reason, because Jesus rose from the dead. And his dawn was the dawn that ended all other nights. And I hope that Easter is a special day to you. I hope that it's a, a day on your calendar. I hope that you have pictures of your family from way back. You know, the kids are rolling their eyes in their... In, in their in their gelled hair for the first time they comb their hair and they put on a tie for the first time. Easter means a lot of things no matter how old you are. It ought to be something special. When I was a little boy, my mom, uh, we had a little thing that we did for my mom's little bookmark for Mother's Day uh, that we made and she put it in her Bible and I would tote her Bible around there and drop it and that little thing would fall out on Mother's Day. Uh, that It said Mother's Day. It would fall out. I always see that my mom kept that thing that I gave her on Mother's Day. Easter ought to be a day that we create memories and traditions. Uh, it ought to be the day that we, we tell our children how special it is, how great it is, uh, because of the dawn of that brand new day. Uh, and, be, and, and at the very end of everything, and we'll close with this, Easter ought to be the day that puts a trumpet in your mouth to tell somebody else about Jesus Christ, to tell somebody how great He is. This is the day that the world can't explain. They can't shut us up. They can't keep us quiet. They can't put their thumb on us. This is the day that we know the Bible is true because Jesus raised again from the dead. It might be Friday in your life. You might say, I got something really serious. I've got a death of a loved one. I've got something happening on my job. Don't ever let a Friday keep you from remembering Sunday is coming. Uh, Jesus is the conqueror of all enemies. And the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, the Bible says. Easter is the day that we celebrate when he destroyed death. And not only that, but he delivers us from the fear of death that Hebrews chapter 2 talks about. That people in all their lifetime held in bondage. You know why you don't have to fear death anymore? Because of Easter. If I go to the doctor and he says something that I don't like, I don't have to worry about that because of Easter. If, if I'm going to jump out of an airplane and my chute won't quite pull, I don't have to worry. Don't do that. That's not very smart. But you don't have to worry about anything that this world worries about because of Easter. And as we live the rest of this day, I hope that you find somebody and greet them with the love of the Lord. Uh, Easter's not a day to argue. Easter's not a day to have anything, uh, oh, I can't believe this happened, and now I messed up my whole day. Nothing can mess up this day, amen, because it's Easter. It's the day that Jesus rose as the son of righteousness and the dawn of a brand new day. And uh, I'm not trying to, to uh, preach a sermon that you remember better than Pastor Daniel's sermon. I didn't hear his sermon. Uh, I, and I just like the, it's a smaller group that stays after lunch because I got heartburn and it, it doesn't matter how small the group is. It, the family of God meets and we enjoy one another, we love one another because of Jesus. And so I can't say anything uh, that, would, that would make Easter better than, it, than Jesus has already made it. I would drop the mic, but it would break and Mr. Bo would not be uh, happy. But Easter, it, it's... It, it, you can't break that. You can hammer nails with that thing. <laughs> Easter is just an awesome day. I praise God for Easter. I praise God for my wife and for my family. But none of that would matter without Easter because we would live here and then we would not see each other for all of eternity. I praise God for all of you, but none of us would matter without Easter. And so I praise the Lord. Uh, for today. Today 
is what makes Christianity Christianity. Amen. Today's our day, and I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, and uh, let's pray. We'll be dismissed. Thank you again for all of the food. Hope you and God bless you and your families as you go home. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that everything that the Bible promised in the Old Testament, you fulfilled it in the New Testament. Even as we read in your scriptures this morning, that you rose again just as you said, just as the scriptures foretold. And Lord, because of that, we don't doubt your love. We don't doubt your goodness. We don't doubt your favor. We don't look at somebody else that might be experiencing your blessing in a, in a little bit greater or different way and doubt your love for us. We know that you love us because of Easter. You rose again with all power so that we might live for all of eternity. Lord, I pray that as your people that are gathered here, it may be that there's someone here that doesn't know you as Savior. I pray that that would be the impetus that caused us to place our faith fully and just in you for our salvation. But Lord, for those of us that know you as our Savior, I pray that no problem would ever be able to push us down, that no calamity would ever be able to cause us to lose hope. I pray that no uh, illness that ever comes that touches this world or our family would cause us to lose our faith in you because Easter settled it all. You said it is finished, and then you, you went down into the grave and you came right back with all power. We thank you so much for that. With that's bowed and eyes closed, maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor David, the truth is, if, if I die right now, I'm not for sure that I'd go to heaven. There's never been a day that I personally put my faith in Jesus, but I'd like to know if that for sure. Nobody looking around won't uh, call anyone's attention to anyone, but you just say, Pastor David, just between me and the Lord right now in my heart, I don't know for sure if I'd go to heaven, but because of Easter, I know I can. I know it's possible. I'd like to know for sure how to go to heaven. Anyone like that? Would you just slip your hand up? I've never been saved. Don't know for sure if I'd go to heaven, but I'd like to know that for sure. Maybe you're here as a believer, and you say, you know, this week was rough. Maybe this month has been rough. A rough year. And my hope and my joy just starts to dip a little bit. And then you come to something like Easter, and I almost feel guilty taking my eyes off of the sun that was risen in the sky of the great power of God in the resurrection. And you say, God knows my heart. I've been discouraged. I've been disappointed lately. My hope is, my faith in God is starting to waver. But because of the resurrection, I need to ask God to give me all that joy and hope and peace right back. There is just something unshakable about the reality of the resurrection. Anyone like that, just slip your hand up in the air. We thank God for his resurrection and I need it because things have been a little bit rough. Father, we thank you for your power. Lord, <clears throat> when real life meets real love, we understand what you have felt for all of eternity, the pain of watching humans turn their back on you, and then you came down to redeem us, and for those of us who accept you as our Savior, that may be the greatest feeling of all of eternity, of, of you watching us love you, and Lord, I thank you so much that you love us first. And if we ever return that love, if we ever believe in you, it was only because you proved yourself on Calvary and when you rose again from the dead. And today, Father, we give you great praise. Many songs have been sung today. We could never sing enough songs of your power and your grace. And Lord, for, the, for those of us today that are, that are under the boulder of, of problems and sin and, and this world, we thank you so much that you've given us the power through the resurrection to defeat our temptations, the power to rise above storms. And Lord, dismiss us today with great uh, joy that you give us your grace for somebody that this week has a, a big problem that they're going to have to face. Give them that resurrection power that they need just to, uh, just to power through this week. We thank you so much for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.